What's up, you guys? I'm here with a new video today, and I'm here to profile uh, Say Habi uh, Caradine's Infernity deck. He got uh, top six at Nationals uh, this past weekend. Uh, he was kind enough. He messaged me. Uh, he thought I was at Nationals. Everyone knew I wasn't at Nationals. Uh, he wanted me to profile the deck for him, but of course I wasn't there, so I wasn't able to do it. But uh, I'm doing him justice uh, by profiling it here. A uh, big shout out to him. Topping with Infernity is again, and this time going all uh, going all the way. He finished 10-1 in Swiss. He got third place uh, after day one, and then um, won out and got uh, sixth place and squeezed in. Uh, to get the last spot to go to Worlds uh, in Italy this year. So that's just amazing. Big shout out to him. Congratulations. And being the only Infernity player, all the other decks were Had and Fad and whatever uh, you want to call it. So it was cool to see another deck besides that top. Everyone thought Girgia was going to just like completely dominate this entire event. It wasn't true. Hat was definitely the superior deck. Um, but to see Infernity's top is just amazing. And also from a well-accomplished Infernity player who had already toppled the deck before. A completely different build this time. Uh, really, really cool. Featuring some new cards that I don't think people even thought of using before. So big shout out to, to Sehabi and I hope that, uh, you know, I'd love to see him bring it home uh, for Worlds. So that'd be cool too. So we'll see what happens. But uh, let me get into the list for you guys right now. Uh, the one Harris. Uh, he ran two copies of Armageddon Knight, two copies of Dark Greffer. And and this is the new card, two copies of Dinotherium. So it says this card, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can only special summon Di uh, Dinotherium once per turn this way. When summoned this card, uh, when uh, when summoned in this way, your opponent can target one level four monster in either player's graveyard. They then special summon it to their side of the field. Uh, the effect isn't really that relevant. Uh, the point is that you're trying to summon it from your hand and you're starting to go off with your combos. Everybody knows that like instant fusion, you use it to start going off uh, to make your infernity plays and set up your big boards and your indestructible boards. So I think the card's really cool. Uh, another cool thing that I noticed about it is that it's a beast. So you are able to use it with Diamond Direwolf if need be. I don't know if that came up that much, but uh, that was another thing that I literally just discovered reading the card uh, as I was preparing this video. So really cool card. Of course, the three copies of Infernity Archfiend. He ran uh, only two copies of Necromancer. I remember in the live profile and something that he had said before was that sometimes if you draw too many Necromancers, you can't really start your combos. So it's better to have uh, one less Necromancer. Uh, it seemed to work for him. A lot of people would probably disagree and say that you need three Necromancers, but clearly he got the job done with just two. And that was another reason he ran three copies of Stygian Street Patrol because this card just does everything. It, you know, makes your Archfiend live, makes your Necromancer live, just does a lot of cool stuff. And as he calls it, the best card in the deck, two copies of Summoner Monk to get crazy combos going. Uh, so that's it for the monsters, 17 monsters. Pretty high for an Infernity deck, but when you're special summoning as much and you're utilizing Soul Charge, it really uh, works out. So on to the spells, I want a lure, you're running a dark deck. Uh, the Archfiend, Pell Labyrinth, the field card. Uh, the One Foolish Burial, two copies of Lance, uh, didn't want to lose to back row, so Lance was really just the best way uh, to preserve that. Get your Infernities on board, get your combos going, and if anything tries to stop you, Lance it. Um, we got the one copy of Launcher, of course, the two copies of Instant Fusion to get out the fusions and do some crazy plays. The one Mind Control, just go overall good against everything right now, especially level 4 decks, level 3 decks, they're everywhere, so uh, Mind Control is just amazing. Uh, three copies of Typhoon. Uh, Typhoon is still needed in this deck because a lot of people don't play Typhoon, but when you're playing, you know, you're playing against Hat, you are, you know, taking a risk. People won't blind space if they're playing against Hat. But you need Typhoon for uh, Floodgate cards like Kaiser, Macro, all that stuff. So having them uh, is just really good. And you're also able to just, uh, you know, bluff out your opponent with MST. So it's really good. And then the one Rota for the Warriors. This card's now at two, so that'll change. Uh, and the three uh, copies of Soul Charge, just like a win condition. The card's insane in this deck. Like, everyone knows it's ridiculous. It's stupid as hell in Dragons, but it's insane in this deck, the things you can do. It's basically like having three more copies of Launch or three more copies of Archfiend. Uh, three upstarts for consistency. And I think the craziest thing was that he only ran four traps, and there were all the Infernity traps, the one barrier and the three break. Uh, so that was the main deck that got him to uh, top six. Onto his side deck. I love his side deck because it's literally five really good cards in full sets. Three max C. Three uh, Forbidden Chalice, three Malevolent Catastrophe, three Traps and three Vanity's Emptiness. Maxi Self-Explanatory. Forbidden Chalice is just good. It turns off effects. Like, it's just good, period. And also, if need be, you can boost your monster by 400 uh, if that's the difference between you winning and losing. So, that's really cool. Malevolent Catastrophe seemed to be a really popular side deck choice from the deck profiles I've seen. Uh, I know Timid Zaman sided two of these uh, in his Mythic Rulers. Uh, Karja is good. It really can blow out games because people just attack. 
haphazardly attack and catastrophe just blows up everything so i think the card's really good three trap stun to ensure that you win basically trap stun go off set your board you know good luck and then three emptiness because it just it's good against dragons good against water good against pretty much everything it's almost an auto win against uh light sworn if they don't have uh lila or a way to get rid of it so card's just really good and especially when you've got your established xyz board and then you have a vanity's emptiness up with the protection that you have uh, you're pretty much just going to win regardless. So it's just another card that just solidifies your win. And then just on to the extra deck. Uh, the two targets for instant fusion, you got Fusionist, because it's a beast. You're able to use it with Diamond Direwolf. And uh, uh, Camion Wizard. Uh, I believe he said he used Camion Wizard because it's 1300, so it cannot get bottomless. That's a big thing, especially since Hat usually searches bottomless turn one. So if you're trying to go off, uh, the Camion Wizard lets you do that. Uh, one Dweller. Two Diamond Direwolf, two Excidon Knights. Uh, Excidon Knight is insane. If you read his uh, top eight match, um, just using the Excidons, having a second Excidon is huge. That Just being able to do that, uh, being able to have access to two of them in your deck is just really crucial. So that was a really good call. Uh, one Gigaga Cowboy, the two Staple Evolval Chains, two Leviers uh, for combo plays. Uh, the one Arc, the one uh, Master Cubital, and the one uh, number 80 Rhapsody and Berserk. So that is Sehabi Kherdeen's, uh top 8 and top 6 um, national deck profile. Infernity is the only Infernity player. Big shout out to him. Best of luck at Worlds. Uh, I don't know. I actually haven't even looked at what the Worlds list is yet. I don't know if Infernities are playable, but it would be awesome to see Infernities win. I don't know if, it, if it'll happen, but I've always been a fan of Infernities, but it's just cool to see the innovation that comes through this deck, how things have progressed when adding that, the Archfiend engine and adding um, now Dynatherium being the only player I know to actually play this card. So really, really cool. Hope you guys enjoyed the deck profile. I don't think I'm going to do that many more. Uh, everyone's pretty much got them out. Vexy, uh, Inch95, MK40, everyone's getting the decks out. Your Yu-Gi-Oh! channel, I can't forget your Yu-Gi-Oh! channel uh getting the live deck profiles uh pat hoban and the bujin players and other people definitely go check those out you guys they're flooding around uh youtube uh they're really interesting to watch so anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile thumbs it up and i'll be returning with more videos soon so i hope you guys enjoyed this one and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you for watching